Welcome to my next tutorial about Calculix and Prepro Max. Today I want to talk about the different types of loads you can apply here in PPM. Um, okay, we have again our uh, little cantilever Peter, which has a fixed support here on this area. And the last tutorial I already showed you um, that we have different types of loads and yeah this is our topic today in my first tutorial i already showed you how to create a surface traction and the question now was what exactly is ppm doing here and what he's doing actually um we have set a force in the negative y direction with 100 newton and what ppm is doing here it creates a force for each of our for each of our knots on the surface and if we would sum up all of these knots we would have 100 newton um, yeah, this is how it works, and if we run it, we get a solution which we already had the last time. Now I want to show you the settings for concentrated force. And this time we have, we have to do again, we have to select a surface. Uh, we can do this directly or we can um, select a, a knot set um, and then I want to have a force again in the minus y direction of 100 newton and what PPM doing is here uh, doing here is PPM will create a force for each knot with 100 newton so ppm creates now here 100 newton here 100 newton and here and so on and so on so we have 25 knots here which means our total force will be 2500 yeah 2500 um, newton and if we simulate that Now we have a displacement for over uh, with over four millimeters, and this is twenty five times so huge like the last time. Um, yes. This time I want to create a pressure load, and the pressure load. Um, here again, of course, we have to select our surface and yeah, let's uh, select the surface this time and we can create the pressure of uh, 100 maybe, I don't know, we will see. And he will create this pressure on the surface, um, in this case also in, uh, in the y direction. Okay, run, load, and here we have a little bending again. Good, our next step, I want to create a gravity load. Um, here, this time we don't select um, a surface or a knot, we select the part. And we have only one part, so it will be Peter again. Um, I want a gravity acceleration of 0 0.81. And of course, not millimeter, we want it in meter. And what you can do is you can delete 1M and press enter. And he will change it to 9810. 
And sorry, of course I want to have it in a minus direction. Okay, uh, that starts the simulation. Results, and here we have our result. Okay, um, now I want to show you how the moment works. And at first I want to show you how it will not work. Okay, so I select again the surface, this will be this one, and I want a moment, talk moment here, let's say, however, 100. But say okay, and Let's start the simulation and we will see that um, actually nothing happens. So we have no, no displacement and we have also no stress. Um, what we have to do, I, I will delete it again. Um, delete, delete. What we have to do at first is we have to create a reference point and this points will be or have to be at this place here and i want to show you the tool uh, so go on tools go to query um, here you have some nice tools um, what we need now is only the point and now we can show us some information about different points or not this time and like I said I want to have um, a reference point at this place and here we can see that this point is located at this coordinates so it is almost zero at x almost zero at y and almost zero or oh, it is zero <laughs> at z sorry and I want to create now this reference point at zero, zero, zero. Okay. Let's create this reference point. The name is RP1. And yeah, the coordinates are already zero. And let's click OK. And now we have here this little yellow point, which is our RP1. And the next step, I or we have to create a rigid body, and this will have our reference point RP1, which we have created in the step before. And this time, we also need um, the selection. And I want to have um, that the rigid body is on this surface. And rigid body means that there will be no displacement actually in this surface so the, the solver can handle the surface as rigid body so click OK and now we can create again a moment and this time we select a reference point name and here again it is RP1 and now we can create again um, 100, click OK, start the simulation, results, and here we have our displacement and also our stress. To show you now a little bit better what a rigid body means, I have created a load, actually two concentrated loads here on this line and on this lines, both in different directions, but with the same um, magnitude of force, but like I said, different directions. And I have uh, my rigid body set. And if I simulate that, This is my maximum deformation at this point here. 
scale, so it's very, very small. And if I go back and I click here, right click, and I say deactivate, which means now we can simulate our problem without the little body. And if we run it, our deformation is much more higher than before. And you can see now um, that we have deformation in this area. And okay, another kind of load is uh, displacement actually. So what I want to do is I want to say that this surface goes down for let's say one millimeter. And I can do this with my boundary conditions. So go here, here we have our fixed boundary condition. Click on BC, right click, create, and then choose displacement. And here we can again select our surface. And I want a displacement again in the negative y direction. And I say minus one millimeter. Okay. And let's run result. And <laughs> yeah, so it looks not real. Go to tools and settings. Um, then deformation scale, go to automatic, apply, and then OK. So here we see now that we have a deformation in the right direction of minus one millimeter. By the way, u2 means y, u1 means x, and u3 means that. We have also two um, other types of load. We can also set a centrifugal load or a pretension load, but I don't want to do this today. Um, maybe I will do uh, the other tutorial about it. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and I wish you a nice day. See ya.